Men are very angry. Right, but the anger of a man is that of a woman. No. Where are you getting all the stuff you say from? My guest is uh, Rev- my next guest here for this next hour, the last hour of today, is Reverend Jeanette Wilson, a smart, smart lady. She is a radio and TV talk show host. She is um, an, a lawyer, an attorney. She has a degree in chemistry, in chemist, chemist degree. Uh, so this woman, this is a smart lady. She worked for uh, Operation Push, executive director for director of. Uh, Operation Push, Jesse Jackson organization at one time. Uh, I think she still worked with them in a way, but right now she is the national, she has a national Sunday school broadcast uh, radio and I believe TV show that she's doing. And we're going to be talking to her about that. We're going to be talking about the uh, war and different issues, things that she's doing to within her community there in Illinois. And also give you our information how you could get with her. As soon as we get our guest, hip hop music, we're going to be talking to her about that and the uh, uh, exploitation of women in that within that uh, so-called music. We'll be dealing with her. She'll be dealing with those issues as well. There was a protest held in Illinois, anti-war protest that she spoke at, um, and. Uh, uh, she's going to be talking to us about that as well. They are trying to get her on the air. I um, I'll tell you her her uh, her success is a long list here. We're going to give out her website. You can read more about what she's doing. At Bond, we are rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. Okay, I believe we have Reverend Wilson. How are you? Are you there, Reverend Good Wilson? Afternoon. Hi. Thank you for thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Yeah. You know what? You, you're a smart lady. You've done a lot. <laughs> well, thank you. I've just done a lot. I don't know how smart I am. <laughs> Believe me, all, with these degrees, are you, you, are, you have a radio and TV show at present, right? I have a television program. Television. And what do you deal with on your show? Well, we teach the uh, international Sunday school lesson that's taught in most churches all over the world, and then we have a segment, we have a youth talk back segment, and we have a ministry in action where we try to uh, educate the churches on issues uh, legislatively or from a health ministry standpoint or internationally oh, okay. that the church should be concerned about. Yes. You are You are an attorney? attorney? Yes, I am. And are you, are you practicing the law right now? I do church law. Oh, you do church law? Mm-hmm. What is church law? Represent churches and pastors. Uh, oh, okay. On on issues around churches. Mm-hmm. Um, were you you were you called by God, and if so, when? Yeah, I was called by God. I wouldn't be preaching if otherwise. So you didn't go to school to become a, a minister. I, oh, I did go to school, but I had, I uh, acknowledged my calling, and just as I went to school to be a lawyer, I went to uh, seminary. Oh, okay. At what age were you called by God? I don't know. When I actually was called, I acknowledged my call in, in my uh, in ninety five. Oh, okay. I, I want to ask about women preachers, mm-hmm. uh, ministers. It's a it's a big deal now. A lot of women are becoming preachers, and they are taking over the churches around the country. I don't see in the Bible where God called women to be preachers. Why do we accept that as a norm or calling from God today? I don't see where in the Bible that he specifically called males only. Um, and and in the Bible it does say that your sons and daughters shall uh, prophesy and preach. So that it, it, there is an indication in the Bible that women preach. We have several models of uh, prophetic voices in Scripture. You have Deborah in the Old Testament. You have um, Abigail in the New Testament. And then... When you look at the women that were around Jesus uh, and the women who were at the uh, tomb for the resurrection, Jesus first appeared to women. And so there's a clear evidence that God has always used women. I, but I noticed that he never put them over men because of that spiritual order of God in Christ, Christ in man, 
man over woman and woman over children, and that order works. But, you know, uh, whenever women are in control or over men, things seem to go to hell in a handbasket. And I think the black community is an example of that because for the last 50 years, the woman has been pretty much the head of the household, and now everybody's screwed up. Well, why do they think? First, why do they? Uh, th- first of all, that is a, a misstatement of fact. Uh, based on the welfare system in America, and prior to that, slavery, men were removed from the household, and women were left uh, to fend for themselves and to provide for their families. Men were, uh, because of the way the welfare structure worked, men could not live in the home with their families. Right, that's true. And so they were removed, and then women had to try to raise children and uh, provide for families without adequate support. You're right about and that. And we, we've gone through an entire period of uh, women having children with uh, absent fathers who refused to either take care of their uh, their own children and so forth. And you're right. And that's why I ask if women, if God had meant for the woman to be the head like that, okay. uh, they have had 50 years of opportunity to do well, it. And I, most of the kids end up on. About, I don't think that's about women being the head and the, or, or not. You have, an, uh, you have a dysfunctional family structure and we have lost a sense of moral value um, in our society. There was a time in our society where, where men focused on um, people work together to provide for families, and we don't have that kind of system now. We have a culture of total disrespect where men and women refer to themselves as bitches and whores, young girls, and common language, which we, we, we did not have. There's a spiritual and moral decay that has existed which has resulted in a breakdown of the family structure. But, Reverend, do you think that if fathers were there to head up their families, you know, guide the wife and children in the right way to go, that we would have uh, the type of destruction that we have now within the community? I think if we had um, men and women of uh, high spiritual character and of moral character, we would have a better society. Right. Just having a male in the house, if he doesn't believe in God and if he is not following God and if he's abusive, as many of uh, uh, many of men in some households are, it will, it's no more helpful right. than to have them absent. I think that fathers should be active in the life of their children. And certainly, I don't believe there are single parents except that the uh, parent has died. There's always a parent for a child. What we're doing now in our society is acting as though these kids were not born to two people but born to one, and that generally has been the female. Right. I do not agree with your argument that women are not called to preach. Obviously, I would not have acknowledged a calling that I didn't receive from God. I don't know. I don't. And I think that, and I don't want to continue to debate that because I think it's a, it's a mute point. I am called. I preach because I'm called, and I preach because I have to. And I don't debate my calling with you or anyone else. It is a fact of the matter. And most women who are called, it's not something that we sought to do. It is something we are compelled to do. It is not an easy calling because we are forced to uh, exist in a male, predominantly male-dominated society, which uh, tends to discriminate against women in terms of how we are treated, how we are respected or disrespected, and yet God has placed us for such a time as this. And so Do you I'm think not that ha- I'm not going to have any more discussion this morning or any other time with you on my calling? It is a, it's a fact of the matter. You either accept it or you don't. But I know what God told me to do. Do you think that uh, men still dominate women, or is it the other way around in society well, today? The relationship between men and women is clearly defined in the Bible, in the Book of Ephesians, and it says, uh, "Women submit to your husbands as your husbands submit to God." Right. But the submission is not. Uh, under the foot of, but it is respecting and giving. Uh, Reverend, let me take let me take a quick break. Reverend, Reverend, let me take a quick break, and I'll come back to you. I want to talk to you about this hip hop music. Eight 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 seven seven. 
1-800-273-5373. I'll be back in a moment. Jesse Lee Peterson is here with Reverend Jeanette Wilson. Uh, feel free to call in and ask any questions. Back in a moment. 888-775-3773. Jesse Lee Peterson is here. My guest is Reverend Jeanette Wilson. She has a National Sunday School broadcast uh, TV show out of Illinois. And before we leave the airways today, we're going to tell you how to get in contact with the Reverend in case you're in her area or you'd like to watch the program. Reverend, you put, I'm reading your uh, information here. You participated recently or spoke at a, a, ra- a anti-war rally recently. Is that true? Well, I participated uh, in one of the uh, anti-war demonstrations as, a, as well as an immigration dis- uh, rally held in Chicago as they were held around the country. Right. Uh, challenging our uh, political leaders to end the war uh, in Iraq now because we feel that it was an undeclared war. And it's a war against the word, not against any uh, any particular uh, egregious acts on the part of Iraq. What do you what, what will you do in place of it? Because if we quit now. Uh, the uh, radical Muslims who hate us because we're a Christian nation and we support Israel well, but, but would come is, and destroy us. But that is not that is not true, and I think people should should discontinue uh, spewing these uh, words of of ignorance and an incorrect uh, description of the Islamic faith. They are not uh, basically uh, people of the Islamic faith uh, spewing hate. There are some radical uh, terrorists that exist in the world. But to suggest that all terrorists are, are Muslims is inaccurate and is ignorant to even make that kind of uh, statement. We're not in the war because... Where's your evidence that all terrorists are not finish, Muslims? Let me finish my sentence. You have no evidence for the statements you just made. And to say that on a broadcast indicates to people that what you're saying is in fact true. There's no evidence that we declare war in Iraq on the basis of some religious fanatics who decided to terrorize America. That is not true. The fact of the matter is we funded, trained, and equipped bin Laden, who we were looking for, who we have not yet found. The fact of the matter is we're in Iraq because of the oil, not because of any terrorists. And so you ought to, if, if we're on the radio or television, we ought to be, be more accurate in our analysis of, of world and local events. So what would you do in place of the war? If we just quit, well, what that, should we do? I think that people, uh, we resolve matters with, with talks. We do not resolve matters with weapons. Weapons kill on both sides. And we end up, we have destroyed a, the culture of a country. We've blown up museums. We have killed innocent children and and families have been uh, just destroyed as a result of our bombs and our efforts. And so it's always better to communicate in conversation as opposed through a violent response because our violence in Iraq suggests that violence is a way of uh, resolving the differences, and, and it never results in anything. So did you feel that way about Saddam Hussein, that the people of Iraq should have tried to talk to him and make peace with him? He he was murdering and killing millions of his own folks. Well, do you think that uh, American presidents who presided over America during the time that several men and women were... But you're not answering my question. Should I'm, the I'm people asking, of Iraq try to make peace, try I, to make I peace believe, with Saddam Hussein? I believe that uh, an, an alternative to... I don't believe in the death penalty. So I believe there was an alternative to hanging Saddam Hussein. <laughs> and what was that? Well, I, I think that those are some things that should have been discussed with the uh, United Nations, with the World Court of Justice, and I do not think the appropriate measures were initiated prior to his arrest and uh, ultimate uh, death sentence. Well, what would you say to Israel, who have tried to talk, uh, make peace with their enemies, and the enemies have refused to make peace, and they just want to kill or wipe out Israel? Well, I, I think that uh, the talks, generally when you're trying to mediate a conflict, you have to bring both parties to the table with an, uh, a person who is uh, non-biased to help the two differing parties resolve the conflict. And I think that 
in, in every instance you bring both sides to a neutral party to discuss uh, ways of settling the differences and reaching a resolve. Reverend, you're a very interesting lady. You actually believe that the way to solve an issue with your enemy is to talk to them. Those that are they're only desiring to kill you and wipe you out, you feel that you need to talk to them. Oh, certainly. I, I believe that uh, love ultimately conquers hate. If I didn't, I wouldn't be a Christian. And so that's amazing to me. That's, that's why I'm, I'm surprised and shocked to hear what you're saying because Christianity teaches that we, there is good and evil out there and you can't play around with evil because evil will wipe you out. The and Bible, these radical the Muslims, let me just finish, these radical Muslims hate us because we are Christian. They hate Christians and Jews. They call them infidels. Their children are taught to hate. And you believe that we can deal with evil just by sitting back and talking to it. I believe that the Bible says love your enemy. And I believe that the Bible uh, provides us a method for resolving disputes. And I follow the teachings and practices of Jesus the Christ. And I believe that the Bible is the inerrant word of God. I follow the Bible. And the Bible tells me that love is the ultimate answer. He's, the Bible says that I and uh, any other Christian must be God's presence in the midst of the city, the nation, and the world. We must be God's power in the midst of the city, the nation, and the world. And we must pray for the people of the city, the nation, and the world. But if that's the case, why did God give the power to uh, the Jews to wipe out their enemy? They destroyed them. They killed them. They didn't try to appease them because every time they tried to appease the enemy, the enemy will overtake them. But he gave them the power to kill them. Why do you think Jesus would be soft, mushy love now? Well, I don't think Jesus is soft or mushy. He said in his first sermon in Luke 4.18, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, which is repeated from Isaiah 61. He hath anointed me to preach, that is to proclaim the good news, to release the captives, and to uh, heal the brokenhearted, to set at liberty those that are captive, and to... Um, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And if we believe that the kingdom of God has come on earth, we are to live as if God is our ruler and not man. And so I cannot think in the ways that you do, which may seem logical, but the Bible says that I must love my enemies. If these enemies are peaceful, loving people, or it we could get, a, if peaceful, but let me ask about. I must love my enemies. I know, but let me ask, uh, Reverend. I, I want so much. I want to talk to you about because you are very interesting. Um, uh, Bin Laden and, and and the Islamic countries around the world they enslave women. They don't educate them. They teach boys and girls to put uh, bombs around their waist. They go to school. They t- they take these kids to school and teach them to kill the Christians and Jews, sacrifice their lives, because they're going to have 18 virgins once they get to heaven. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, They hate Christians and Jews. When you read the Quran, they say you can even lie to the Christians and Jews in order to deceive them, in order to take them out. Um, If these people are not, I mean, if these these people can be taught to uh, uh, or made to become friends, why don't why why are they trying to make friends with us? Why are they talking to us? Well, I I don't I cannot uh, you cannot expect me to look inside the head of my enemy and decide how it is they think or feel. What I am ca- called to do as a person who believes in Jesus the Christ is to act in a manner that Christ would act and think like Jesus. I'm not to have the mind of my enemy, I am to have the mind of Christ. Let this mind of Christ be also your in, in your mind. But there is, no, there is no indication that you have the mind of Christ. You, well, you're too soft. Well, no, I'm not too soft. I just don't think, like you, I don't have these, uh, these buzzwords of hatred because Jesus was a man of love when he was on this side of eternity, and he taught love. I mean, if he hated... When he was up on the cross, he would have just called down a legion of angels and said, kill all these people that have crucified me and caused me to hang here in severe agony. But, Reverend, I think what you don't understand, you're right, Christ was about love. 
but uh, not the kind of emotional love that you're referring I'm to. I'm not talking about emotional love. What I'm is love? What, what, what love? What is love? I am, I am talking about an unconditional love for people that are disrespectful. The people that crucified Christ were, were not people that were necessarily following him. These are people that he had served, he had healed, he had delivered. And yet when asked, should we have Barabbas or Christ, they said, give us Barabbas, crucify Jesus. These are the people that spat on him. They beat him all the way up. I the know, but the when Christ over. mentioned love, Reverend, he was, he was saying yet, don't hate. No, That's all yet, he meant. No, what he said was, on Calvary, his first word, Father, forgive them. Forgiven is knowing what you're doing to me, yet I am asking God to forgive you because you don't really understand the impact of your actions. Right, right? but you don't sit back and let them wipe you out, though. You have to protect yourself. Don't, don't you know that God has already been victorious over Satan and all of the uh, forces of evil? And so all we have to do is stand in the presence of God, knowing that we are we are more powerful than any of these uh, enemies that that you speak of and others talk about, and so I am not afraid of them. That is why I can speak with uh, so-called gang members across. And I participate in several gang summits. I'm not afraid of our young people, our young children who have been uh, motivated economically. And, in, and moved into negative spheres, I believe that when you approach people with this unconditional love that I care more about your soul, I care more about your future than even you do. Do you think Ben Laden would care about your unconditional love? I, I've never met him. But do you think, in reading about him and, and seeing I what believe, he, the, I, the I hatred in his heart I, for I, us, do you think he would care about your unconditional love? I think that there's a possibility and an opportunity for all who have been presented with the Word of God to be saved and to therefore be transformed. I don't know if he's ever been presented with the Word of God, with the Word of Christ. <laughs> and so I believe that that's my job, to present the Word. And if they reject it, then they, hell will be a much, a much worse pl- place than we can provide for them on this side of eternity. They're going to go directly to hell. I want to talk to you about the hip hop music. Uh, there's a, a a focus on it right now because of uh, uh, we're kind of ventured off from what Don Imus said when he called the black girls nappy headed hoes, uh-huh. and now there's a focus on uh, the uh, rap music. Were you offended by? Uh, you know what? I want to ask a question, but you think about it when I come back from this break. We're at the bottom of the hour. I'll let you respond to it. But I want to know, were you offended by Don Imus' comments when he called the basketball team nappy-headed hoes? And what are you doing about the hip-hop music? What should be done about it, if anything at all? one 877 one jesse Lines are open. My my guess is very interesting. I'm enjoying this conversation with Reverend Jeanette Wilson. Back in a moment. I am speaking with Reverend Jeanette Wilson. She is a national she has a national Sunday school broadcast TV show. She's also an attorney. She's uh, active in her community. She's trying to help do good uh uh in her community, not just around the country. Uh Reverend Wilson, the uh were you offended by Don Imus comment? Well, I think they were uh, racist and inappropriate. Uh, however, I think that his comments uh, were made in the context of a, a complete culture of uh, self-denigration by black women and black girls. Uh, as I am more offended by the not the hip-hop, but the gangster rap artists, many of whom are female, who uh, use negative language and images of themselves, and then our young people who perpetuate uh, these negative images by dancing to the music, by repeating it, calling themselves uh, negatively. Words that uh, we did not use publicly or privately uh, when I was growing up. It's just not positive for you and I to call each other uh, all these negative names and, and words. And so... 
I think I must just indicate how far we had uh, allowed this to go, where anybody felt comfortable saying things about us that we they have heard us and hear us continue to say about ourselves. That's a very good point. Hip hop is is a very positive uh, art form and it's a cultural expression. Gangster rap, which is what the uh, the entertainment industry has promoted and projected and paid for has taken our young people who are poets and you know musicians and paid them to talk about themselves. I am more offended by a uh, flavor flays and uh, <laughs> I love New York and Missy Elliott and Snoop Dogg and Snoop with his the sizzle manizzle, which is still saying uh, save a nigga yeah. in the in the in the language. I'm offended that our young people think it's okay to get paid to say anything and do anything, dance and uh, all of this uh, popping, uh, pop lock and dropping, which is uh, nothing more than uh, a sexual dance that that our kids are expressing any and everywhere, publicly, privately, any time they feel like it at proms and stuff. Yeah. I'm offended by that, and I think it's a time for us to call ourselves into some moral order. Why do you think that type of music uh, was allowed to happen, and why is it out of control within the black communities around the country? Because the mass media has marketed and paid for it. Anytime a guy like 50 Cent with no real education, uh, no particular uh, background of service, can make the kind of money he's making just cussing and acting a fool, then when you grow up, who would you want to be like? And and so they have projected these icons. Anytime you get an Oscar for saying it's hard out here for a pimp, our kids are confused about what makes sense. And we have allowed this mass media to just market to our young people. Hip-hop started as an underground culture. Our, our rap artists who were like the last poets and the ancient griots used to press their own uh, CDs and circulate them underground. Once the uh, entertainment industry found out how much money it was, uh, it could be made using these artists, they started paying them big money. Right. And so now you got uh, people on television pimp that ride. You got the MTV and all of these uh, decadent videos. And the kids are making tons of money, more than you and I were making in two or three <laughs> lifetimes. Yeah. Uh, under age 25. Why, why do you think that these rappers, both male and female now, why do you think that they hate black women so much that they're willing to exploit them in their music like that? They don't seem to care about exploiting black women. Well, why do they hate them so much? Well, I think a lot of them have uh, come from families where uh, mothers were not the kind of mothers that they should have been and could have been, and they've had a uh, pain in and growing up, they've struggled, and, you know, they've had um, abusive, some of them have had abusive family relationships, and so their response has been to lash out in a very general way, comment on a society that they knew, but not the broader society that exists. It's only the area that they have grown up in. They've been so inundated with pain, the only thing they know uh, to do is to express that pain, and they do it in their uh, lyrics. You're absolutely right. I agree with you. I uh, I talk to men, black men, especially around the world, around the country, mm -hmm. and most of them have grown up in homes where the mothers are very angry. Mm -hmm. The mothers are angry because the fathers are not there, and they right. take their anger out on their children. Right. And so the kids end up becoming like mama, and they, they join gangs, and they make babies out of wedlock, they they hate their mother, so they take it out on other black women in the community. And the other thing is a lot of uh, mothers in particular have allowed their sons to uh, engage in criminal activity to support the family. Yeah, I mean, that's right. How do you watch a 40-inch a, a television from that's provided by a son who has no job? Where do you get the money from? So, Reverend, I go back to my original point. Don't go back there. I told you not going back there. <laughs> no, this is the point I want to make, though. <laughs> <laughs> is that if it was meant 
by God for women to raise children on their own, we wouldn't have this because if father were fathers were in the home as they were prior to the civil rights movement, you would not have this kind of music. You would not have this type of hatred within the uh, black community, and the kids would not be allowed to exploit black women in such a manner. Well, but the mothers don't have that kind of control over the kids. Well, I, I think it's, it's several issues. The fathers still can have a relationship with their children, and, they, and many of them do. I think that uh, to say that the fact that women uh, are in control of the household is the reason why all of this happened. It has been, it's, an ex, it's economic exploitation. Anytime you have uh, the rising number of black men who are incarcerated, that is, uh, that is an intentional racist move. Anytime uh, they, the studies will indicate that black and Hispanic men are stopped and arrested more frequently than any other males driving, that don't mean we're the worst drivers. It just means that society moves in a racist manner to incarcerate black men and men of color. But, Reverend, you sound like you're saying that they are in jail because of economic situ- of the economic some, situation. Some, some of the men that but are in stat- prison. Hold on one minute. But stat shows that they're in jail because they lack character and they're committing crimes. No, you they're, know, they're, they're in jail. They have material things. They're, they're in jail in disproportionate numbers to their white male counterparts. And so there's something wrong with that. They're, but you know why? Because you have 70 percent, according to the Census Bureau, you have 70 percent of black babies born out of wetlock. And so uh, that's why you have more of them committing crime no, than you see the true. white guys doing it. That's not true. But that is true according to the Census Bureau. Well, that's not the, the your your analysis is not correct. That's not why more of them are in jail. More of them are in jail because more black men get arrested than white men, and they get convicted of crimes primarily because they, A, can't afford a lawyer, and most of them plead guilty to uh, to offenses, whether they've committed them or not, because of the <coughs> defenders will tell them, if you plead, you can walk this time. But you have to admit that they're doing it because they lack character. They're immoral. No, I'm not. They're not all immoral. And that's not true. Would a moral person commit a crime? Well, most of them, there's no evidence that they absolutely committed the crime. If you check the records of many of the the black men behind bars, they're not guilty of the crimes that they're sitting behind those Well, bars. how about out of the wedlock birth, 70% of black well, they're babies? Are, they're is, that due to, is that due to economics or the lack of moral character? Oh, that's, that's clear, lack of moral character on the part of males and females. Right. I don't have to sleep with you just because you tell me to. So why is it different with the crime then? I mean, well, the crime... The, the crime rate is based on how people get arrested, who gets arrested, who gets stopped. Anytime you can go into any city in America, and if you're driving while black and male, you will be stopped. There's not one black man I've ever met that has not been stopped, searched, and frisked just because he was black. Not because no, no was it black. wasn't because he was black, it Reverend. Is. It was it because... Is. It would be because black Americans have allowed crime to run rampant no, no, in their no, no. communities. You're a car, and you didn't run a red uh, hold on, Reverend. You didn't violate any laws. You got stopped. But Reverend, if if a black man commit a crime, the police officers are uh, paid to. So you saying that white men don't commit crime? No, I'm not saying that. But white people are not excusing their. Uh, 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 criminals in the manner that black people are. You guys are blaming, you're blaming criminals, act, criminal actions on, on no. quote unquote the system, and that's not true. What are you, a Republican? Am I what? Are you a Republican? I'm a, I'm a minister. Are you a Republican? Why do you ask me that? Because you sound like one. How's that? <laughs> you must be a Southern Baptist. Why do you say I sound like a Republican? Because you have this skewed view of, of life that's not based on real facts. I, uh, and you just run the the uh, the, the right-wing evangelical Christian line. But, so saying. saying that someone commit a crime because he or she is immoral is a, a Christian thing or a Republican thing? No. You said that black men are in jail because they're more criminal than white That men. they're committing crime. There are more they're, of them. They're, they're not. And I'm telling you they're not. They're being arrested, and they have studies all over this country that indicate black men are disproportionately stopped, arrested, and convicted in comparison to white counterparts. And that may be true. That that, is that's probably true, Reverend, but it's because because black men have no problem with committing crimes. Not all. No, no, 
Not all. Well, look at Enron. What color were they? But all you're doing now is justifying one wrong doing no, with another no, one. No, I'm saying I, to you I, that white men are criminal. They just don't get caught as often. They don't get stopped as often. <laughs> they don't get convicted as often because they're white and they get better lawyers because they have more resources. Reverend, I want to move fast because this time we're going by. You, you're such a good guest. So I want to ask you, I was offended when Al Shopton, when uh, Imus met with Al Shopton because it gave the impression that Shopton and Jackson and others are the gatekeepers of the black community and that we all agree with them. And as you and I know, that Jackson and Shopton are immoral. They are racist. That's not true. They, they use racism in order to fatten their own pocket. They have yeah, divided the right. race. And I thought that was a bad impression to give that kind of representation. Were you as offended as I was no, by that? Uh, certainly not. I know both of them, and I respect uh, Reverend Jackson uh, and Reverend Sharpton. What do you respect about them? Well, the fact that they have been on the cutting edge of fighting for human rights, for the la- and Reverend Jackson in particular, for the last 40 years without fail. Now, he is not perfect, nor is Reverend Sharpton. Did you respect him when he cheated on his wife and made a let baby? Me let me finish. And uh, supported Bill Clinton? I I can respect you. doesn't mean that I believe that you're perfect. Reverend Jackson admitted to his uh, indiscretions and his failures. By force. Many men don't even admit when forced. But the the real deal is I try to look at the good that people do which outweighs the indiscretions because none of us are perfect. All of us fall short of the glory of God. When I look at they responded to the IMA situation. They brought national attention and perspective on it. And everybody uh, can sit back and say, well, we, they should have done this, they should have said that. They have a national platform, and they have the national ear, and they were able to uh, raise some concerns. I want to, I'm sorry, I want to talk to you about solutions when we come back in the last few minutes we have with you. 888 Back in a moment. Winding down the last hour of today's show. This is fun. I've enjoyed this. Reverend Janet Wilson is with me. National National Sunday School broadcast uh, TV host, a lawyer, smart woman. I truly enjoyed you, Reverend. Uh, We were talking about, I was telling you, Reverend, that I was embarrassed by Jackson and others. I remember when the Duke Lacrosse case happened, Jackson and Shopton and all of them came out of the woodwork, as they do whenever it's a white-on-black situation. Even though the black girl was a a, a stripper, she had children out of wedlock, uh, there was no real evidence that uh, the uh, lacrosse guys had molested her. Jackson offered her a scholarship. They seemed to support evil and call themselves men of God. I don't understand, Reverend, why you would admire or respect men like that. Well, because I admire them for continued, I admire Reverend Jackson for going uh, to Syria and getting Lieutenant Goodman when nobody else even realized the man was a POW and cared. I admire him for uh, marching uh, in Louisiana when others had forgotten that the people have still not been restored to their homes. So Did I'm you sure. admire him when he said that he spit in white people food while working in a restaurant? Did you admire that? Well, I would not recommend that, but let me let me suggest this. Uh, I don't think that it is fruitful for us to have a discussion on whether or not you like Reverend Jackson. I think uh, that he has done more good than most of our so-called like what leaders. No one can tell me the good that he has done. He has given. He has uh, opened up doors for uh, most of our black businesses. His friends. No, not his friends. I, I have worked at Operation Push. I know when we opened up uh, franchises uh, for African Americans with the Burger King Corporation when there were none. I remember when the, the uh, scavengers could not pick up uh, garbage from major food chains around the country. I remember when uh, uh, black people could not uh, uh, get hired to do advertising for major corporations. You know what I, I noticed, I Reverend? When the health I, and because of time, let me ask you this. I noticed that not all, but most black preachers and so-called leadership don't care that most black Americans are suffering not because of racism, but the lack of moral character. They don't, no. they don't, blacks don't 
preachers and others don't seem to deal with the lack of moral uh, uh, character within the black community. They seem to look at the exterior rather than the spiritual uh, uh, actions or identity of black Amer- America. Why is that? Well, I don't think that that's true. I think that racism has played a major role in, uh, and had a very negative impact on the uh, viability of African Americans in this country. And but how has racism caused black folks to have... 70% of their black babies out of wetlock. How, how did racism do that? Well, I think, you know, racism has contributed to the economic plight of, of black people. And in many instances, when they uh, uh, change this whole welfare system where you pay people to have but re- children. But, Reverend, that's nonsense. People don't have, have sex because they don't have, they don't have sex because they don't have money. They have sex out of wetlock because they don't have character. They lack character. Let, let me say this. I, I think that most people do have character. I do think there's a moral decline in our nation. Um, uh, and especially across, the black community. Across racial lines. I think it is immoral for corporations to deposit garbage in communities where people of color and poor people live and not clean up uh, the dumps and the waste. I think it is immoral for people to uh, be forced to live uh, below the poverty level and, and eat out of garbage cans and live in shelters and not be able to earn a living wage. I think it is immoral for 40 million. Do you think it's immoral, Wait, Reverend, immoral for black on black crime? Do you think, think it's immoral? It's immoral for 40 million people to be without health insurance. I think it That's is amazing. immoral for the number of homeless people to be wandering the streets of America in a country this rich. Reverend, you must be Democrat. Are I'm you a Democrat? Not. I am a child of God. Are you Demo- Do you I vote am. Democrat? I vote independent. You don't vote for the Democrats. Did you support Bill Clinton? Of course. And you did, even though he was a liar, he was impeached, he cheated on his wife, he was, not uh, he was corrupt. You still voted for him? I voted for Bill Clinton. You voted. That's amazing. How is it that blacks can be solutions yeah let me just ask this last question we'll talk about solution how is it that you can say that you're called by god but yet you support a platform or a man such as bill clinton and jackson and others who are totally against god in the way that they live and their actions says that they're against god how can you be for them well i don't think they're against god i do think that they have not uh as most people, when, when God looked down through the corridors of eternity, he could not find one person that could go to Calvary for us except, his, except sending himself divinity wrapped in humanity. So there are none perfect, and there are no men. Even uh, Job, though he were righteous, was not perfect. But so God asked us to be to perfect ahead. as he is perfect. He well, tell us well, to be perfect so we can become that way. Have you, done, have you done anything wrong? Reverend, not I just ask you this. when you get to judgment, will will God find any fault with you? God like has he's the only perfect one we got. And that's a very good you, question, Reverend. You must be the second coming of Jesus, Reverend. That's a good question. Once I God became my father, mm-hmm. then I he turned away. Come. Hold on, then I turned away from sin. Mm-hmm. But these people are saying that they are children of God and even representatives of Him, and yet they are sinning with no problem. That's not true. That's not true. What's what wrong? What is the solution to the lack? Uh, abortion out of control, 50, 15 million black babies aborted since the early 70s, 1,500 every day are dying inside the woman's womb, black-on-black black crime out of control, uh, false black leaders, corrupt leaders are leading the people to hell, uh, uh, abortion, all this crap going on. What is the solution for black folks, Reverend? How do we solve the, those issues? Well, I think, obviously, uh, more people have to really... Uh turn away from their wicked ways and turn to God. There's no other answer other than God. Now, on a very practical level, I think that the uh, the role of the faith community, the black church, has to really step up its involvement in active ministry and really uh, challenging the political systems to do uh, justly for God's people, but also challenging the people to live uh, them live as better stewards of themselves and of the resources that God provides. I believe, Reverend, and you can tell me if you think I'm wrong with this, I believe that things are not going to get better for black Americans, those without fathers in their homes, uh, until black men turn back to God 
and get married and guide their wives and children in the right way to go, turn away from these black preachers and so-called uh, black leaders and start to think for themselves, stop hating whitey, and take responsibility for themselves instead of the government. Less government in your life, the better off you are. And to judge people based on character, not color, because most blacks are racist today toward white folks. It's impossible for black people to be racist. And I wish you stopped saying that. You have to have... How is it impossible? That's it, not, it, because you have, unless you have the power to define and control uh, people, you can't... You can't and, well, that's not true. Racism is just simply hating your fellow man, right? No, uh, it is not. Reverend? It is not. But... Reverend, how do uh, I don't believe that things are going to get better until we can put men back in control of his wife well, of their think, wives and I children? Think, I think Am I right about that? The son is getting more men uh, uh, to to accept God and to live a godly life, and I do think more men ought to consider marriage over than over and against shacking or not even shacking, just sleeping and moving on. But marriage, in order to guide and protect their wives and children, right? Oh, marriage is, is obviously the biblical way. That's right. the preferred way. You would you should not have children without outside of marriage. So why isn't the focus on the lack of morality rather than blaming whitey within the black community today? Well, I think that God requires us, he said, to love mercy, do justice, and walk on before him. And so it requires us to look at all things. You cannot live in a world that is uh, politically organized and ignore how... Uh, the politics of things affect the people of God. And so we have to be advocates for those who cannot advocate for themselves. We have to uh, cause our people to live morally uh, upright and righteous lives. But that's not going to happen until the Father take over because well, that's, that's this, this, anger, I, this anger, Reverend, that's been passed down from the black mothers and grandmothers is very destructive. And until well, the Father... It didn't pass from the grandmothers this the anger is from a combination of factors, and it, it, it stems and emanates from the men as well. Men are very angry. Right, but the anger of a man is that of a woman. No. Where are you getting all the stuff you say from? I mean, you can look at it, Reverend. These men who are very you angry. Make up stuff, don't you? Reverend. <laughs> I you can enjoy talking to you, but you just make up anything. And no, uh, Reverend, you just what it is. <laughs> you, I've enjoyed you too because you you definitely oh, can hold your own. But what we need to do, Reverend, I guarantee you, if you take step back and take a second look, you would see that the anger that you find within black men is that of their mothers. They didn't get it from I their fathers. You know, with, with, with black men, because I don't believe that's true. You but, know some preachers. But, oh. Reverend, the, really? black, the fathers are not even around, so they can't make their children some angry. Some, yes, they are. Many of them are around. They're in and out. They show up. They buy little toys and little... Right, but they're not causing the anger, though. It's the mothers and yes, grandmothers. They yes, they are. Reverend, how can the people get in touch with you or watch your program? Uh, they can go to... Um, Direct TV, TCT Direct TV. We're on every Saturday night at 6 p.m. all over the world. Oh, okay, 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. I don't know what time it is in, uh, on the West Coast. Right, we're three hours behind you, I believe. Okay, Two or three hours. Direct T TV, TCT Direct TV. And if uh, you have the Internet, at 6 p.m. we're on streamingfaith.com. It's the International Sunday School Broadcast. And I wish all of you would watch, and I want you to watch it because maybe you come <laughs> to Chicago and come on so we can have a face-to-face -face debate. I would love that, Reverend. Let's mark that down so I can come there. I would love to do that. I want that. you to do that. Because we got to get some truth in, within we the... Uh, and we have to have these discussions. Yeah, that's right. More and more and more and more. And if you notice, Reverend, most black men, not all, not all, but when it comes to dealing with the black woman and being honest about her destruction... Most black men are afraid to even bring it up because they are afraid of the hostile reaction of black women. I'm going to send you a Bible so you can read it so you can get <laughs> <that> informed. <laughs> but I love you. Hey, I definitely appreciate it. I, I, I wish you well, and I would love to come there and be a part of your okay, TV you show. Email me all your information. I will see that you get a, a, an invitation. Okay. Even though I'm a woman preacher, I'm going to let you come. No, I would love to be on with you, Robert. I, you know, also... I respect you not getting too upset when I tell you that women are not called by God. Right. I understand that. Right. Rev J. Wilson at ATT.net. R-E-V J. Wilson at ATT.net. And we are called. Okay. And I don't need you to verify, certify, or acknowledge. <laughs>
Thank you, Reverend. Right. Thank you. I look forward to meeting you. All right. All right now. Bye bye. <laughs> That's amazing. That was fun. Absolute fun. We are here Monday through Friday, folks. Go to my website at bondinfo.org. B O N D I N F O dot O R G. Get the word out that Jesse Lee Peterson's on the air. Peterson is on the air Monday through Friday, uh, Worldwide Web, and on some station. You just have to find them. If we're not on in your station, in your city or town, call up the local station and say, Get Jesse on. I'll see you tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Have a good one.